everyone. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you StreamYard and it has become quickly one of my favorite new live streaming tools to use for my blog. And we also recently used it for back to school night at the school that I work at. So it is amazing, it's very affordable and it's super easy to use. So I'm really excited to share with you guys today all about this. So first thing first, one of the most uh, important questions that I get asked all the time is, does this cost me anything? And yes and no. So if you look at this tier that they've got, it is free to an extent, but there are some options that you wouldn't have within it. So for me personally, and while this seems like a very silly reason to choose the paid option, I didn't want the StreamYard branding that you see right here in the video. And that just means that kind of up at the top right corner, there's a large StreamYard logo that will show up while you're doing your live streams. And I just really didn't want that to be showing up on my live streams. Personal preference, not a big deal, but that's just how I feel. Now, a couple other great features that are on here is the 10 on-screen participants. I knew I would probably want more than six participants at some point, as well as the three destinations. Personally, I only really use two of those destinations right now, Facebook and YouTube, but it does give me that flexibility for more options if I want it. So, um, that's up to you. However, if you want to use free, that's great. If you want to pay, that's great. If you are interested in the paid um, portion, feel free to check the blog post for a referral link where you can get $10 off on your first month. I did link that in there. I choose to pay monthly just because I want to see how long I'm going to use it, but you can choose to purchase annually and save a little bit of money too. Now, when you go into StreamYard, you're going to see that there's upcoming broadcasts and past broadcasts. Now, if you want to look at your past broadcasts, it's kind of cool because all the information is still there, where it was posted to, how long it went, what the date, what the time was, as well as the ability to go back in. You can join it again if you needed to. You can view where it's located on Facebook or YouTube, and you can even download the recording. Downloading the recording is kind of a cool feature too because I do have some uh, guests that I've had on my blog before that want that video to put on their own YouTube channels, and I'm more than happy to share that with them. Now, when you go to upcoming broadcasts, that's where you can create a new broadcast, but the very first thing you want to do is choose a destination. I have selected my iHeartEDU Facebook page and my personal YouTube channel as the destinations. If you want to add more destinations, you just go to Add to Destination and choose which destination you want to add, sign in, link it up. It takes hardly any time at all. I just recently did this again for our school for back to school night, and it took me less than five minutes to set everything up. So really, really easy. When you go to broadcast, you can choose to create the broadcast, and this is where you're gonna want to select where you want this to go to. I'm choosing Facebook and YouTube right now, and I'm gonna write that this is a test, that this is for a blog post. That way, nobody's kind of curious, like, what's going on with my heart EDU and what's Megan doing? Um, you can add a description. And what's really great about this is that all of this information will show up on both Facebook and YouTube. And I can choose to schedule for later. I usually upload some sort of thumbnail image, but if you don't, it defaults to whatever your um, like header on your YouTube channel or your Facebook pages. So I'm not going to add one for now. And then I'm going to choose just to start it at a later time and schedule it. So when I do that, it takes me into more details if I want to edit things specifically for each channel or page. And if I'm done, I can choose to create a broadcast. And now that's going to show up right here in my upcoming broadcast because it's scheduled. So it just takes a moment. And it's thinking and it's thinking. All right, so you, you can see that it's scheduled for Facebook, YouTube, and it's scheduled for 8.45 p.m. Now, I kind of want to show you real quick where this goes on YouTube and on Facebook. If I go to my channel and I go to videos, and then I choose live, I can see that this is located right here. So you can see test, this is for a blog post, and it's scheduled for later today. If I go to my Facebook page and I refresh it, then it's going to show up right here. So you can see how it actually took the header from right here and just added that as the picture. So like I said, I usually add my own picture. But what this looks like here is like on Facebook, here's an example of an old 
um, video that I did through StreamYard and it's still here and my lighting was better because it wasn't so dark. Um, but you can absolutely see that it just stays here and you can look at it at any time. And on YouTube, you can see that all these replays are here and they are also then added to my channel. Now, if I want to actually start the broadcast, I can choose to enter the broadcast studio. I don't know why it's, I guess my Wi-Fi is a little bit slow right now. There we go. So when you enter this part, this is where you put in your name and you can choose to mute yourself on entry, stop the webcam. You can adjust any of your features, your audio. You can even add a green screen, green screen behind you if you wanted to. And then when you're ready to enter, you can choose enter broadcast studio. Now, when you enter, you are in the backstage. Okay. And that means that when your picture is down here in this bottom left corner, nobody can see you. Nobody can hear you. This is what everybody's seeing right now. Once you click add to stream, then people can see you. And this is when you start to show up. Now, a couple things to note when other people join down here, they're going to be backstage at first and you're not going to be able to hear them until you add them to the stream. So before I start a live stream, I add everyone up here before I choose to go live. That way I can talk to them about what we're going to do. So it's kind of nice to have the backstage option. If you need to invite people, all you have to do is go to invite and share that link with them. You can send it by Gmail, email, messenger, whatever works best for you. Um, you can mute yourself, you can stop the webcam, the camera and mic settings that you saw a little bit ago, they're still there for you to adjust. Um, and I don't know like how advanced I get. So right now you can see standard definition. A lot of times I change that to high definition and it doesn't look like it changed much right now, um, but it absolutely can play a difference sometimes for some people. Now, if I want to, I can even share my screen and I'm going to actually show my other screen that I've got up right now because I have two monitors and it's actually just going to be the blog post that I'm writing. So not super exciting, but when I share my screen, you'll see that it's added to the bottom here and then it can pop up here for me to use as well. Now, if I want only myself, there's these awesome features right underneath here where I can choose only my video. If I had two people, I could have two people show up at a time. Or if I want to show a small version of the um, screen share that I'm doing, I can. Or I can share a larger version. Or I can share only my screen, which this is a really nice feature sometimes if you have like a lot that you're showing on a screen or a presentation or you're demoing something. That is a really great ability. So that way they only see that and not any of their screen is taken away. You can see that actually kind of is a nice quality difference too. Now, what you have over here on this right side, I'm just gonna move myself around. Um, this is the like live chat that will show up on Facebook and on YouTube. So that means that if something is coming from Facebook, it'll have a little Facebook symbol here. And if it's from YouTube, a YouTube symbol. You can post comments that go to everywhere or you can choose to post things only to certain locations. Sometimes I do that because if people are only responding on Facebook, I don't want to say, you know, hi, John, great question. And it show up on YouTube and there was no John ever there that had ever asked a question that just gets confusing. But there will be some things that I share to both sometimes and do all destinations. Like here's a link to the website that so-and-so just shared. Now, a few more important features that are over here on the right side are banners. You can add and create your own banners to show throughout it. Um, so you can do show as an example. So you see this is how it shows up. This is an example of a banner. Click on a banner to show it on the screen. You can hide it when you don't need it. And you can make it show up there. You can also add specific branding features. So you can see that mine's actually set up for iHeartEDU colors. And I think I've got it set up for, that's weird. It used to be on default. I'm gonna change that back. But I can put my logo up here at the top right too. Or I can take it away. I can also put this StreamYard um, overlay on it, or I could create my own, which is kind of a good option. These things are a little bit more recent, but you could also add video clips as a countdown for when everything's going to start. And then when it's done, it just counts down. You can add your own background. So right now it has like that StreamYard background with the leaves. 
and you can show display names or not. Now, one other thing I realized I just forgot to mention, when you are done screen sharing or anything like that, all you have to do is just click to remove. And then that goes away and you're back to your basics. You can do that with the people that are on there. You can add and remove them from the feed or however you want that to work. Last thing is there is a private chat option where you can talk and add private chat messages with just your guests during it because your guests cannot see the comments. They can't see all these features that you have. They only can see the private chat. Now, last thing and most important is when you are ready to go live, you're simply going to hit go live and then that's going to take you into Basically, your menu doesn't change here at all. All that changes is that it says this is now live. And there's a few little buttons up here towards where you see the scheduled sign is right now that will say how many people are on from Facebook and how many people are on from YouTube. And when you are done, you can leave the studio down here at the bottom, go back, and then you can download your broadcast if you want. Now, let's say, like me right now, you did a test. Super easy because when you delete it, you can choose to delete it from both platforms. So it's super, super simple to make it go away if you needed it to do so. So kind of like I mentioned the blog post, a few ways that you could use this in the classroom or at your school is back to school night. It was a super easy way to use StreamYard. Um, you could do a reading with a staff member. I know a lot of elementaries like to do like reading time with a principal or a teacher that you could post live. You could do school-wide updates. You could do parent professional development on there, or you could have guest speakers. So there's a lot of great ways you could use live virtual events with StreamYard to engage your families. So again, if you're interested in this, I highly suggest that you check out the free version of it. If you are interested in the paid version, I do have a referral link on the blog post. And if you have any questions, please let me know.